Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's overview and review, we're going to look at Stalingrad Solitaire, designed by Gary Graber, published by Canvas Temple Publishing. In this game, you play as General Paulus, commanding the Germans, the surrounded uh, remains of the 6th Army at Stalingrad. Your goal is to basically hold out and or possibly link up with the German relief force. Um, at the end of the game, you're going to count your VPs and see if you equal the historical result or exceed it. Um, I do have a, so I have a recon video, my unboxing. I have a full playthrough, uh, which is broken up into three parts. And then, well, obviously I have this overview and review. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time describing how the game works. You're, you can see that in my playthrough video, but I will give you just a quick overview. Um, then we'll dive into my pros and cons and my final thoughts. So let's get to it. All right, so I mentioned you are basically General Paulus commanding the remains of the 6th Army. Um, each turn, you have a strict sequence of play you're going to go through. It'd be a combination of drawing cards and then rolling and checking tables. Um, as you're doing that, you're going to be managing what little forces you have. Um, the Russians, the Soviets will start launching attacks. Eventually, they'll launch, or most likely, are going to launch a final offensive, in which case they're going to launch even more attacks on you. Um, you're trying to maintain your perimeter while at the same time possibly meet a link up with Ho the relief force, Hoth, here. Um, while you're doing that, you're going to have to worry about a couple things. So each turn, you're going to be checking things like the Luftwaffe, their commitment level, the relief force, so Hoth, his commitment level. You know, are they try re trying really hard to help you or are they saying, listen, we got other issues in the southern front that we got to deal with? Um, that will be a key part of the game. You're keeping track of the weather. Is it fair? Is it poor? That's going to help or hurt your supplies. In this game, supplies are a huge part of it. Obviously, you don't really get reinforcements, um, troops anyway. You can evacuate wounded, which is something you'll need to do because the wounded track will go up as you take losses. If it ever reaches 20, the game will end there. Um, at the same time, the actual, besides what's happening here, there is the entire southern front is abstracted with this strategic situation index counter. Um, what that means is it starts at 10 and it generally looks kind of slowly goes down, but there are things you can do to make it go back up. Um, but if it ever gets to zero, you automatically lose. Basically shows that the, um, the entire Southern front has collapsed. So each turn, like I said, you're gonna be kind of managing what little forces you have. You can make attacks if you want. In fact, you probably should make some whether you're driving for a link up, maybe capturing the rest of the um, Stalingrad Central, securing your perimeter, etc. But beware, the Soviets will be attacking you, um, will be moving in. Um, the actual, besides your choices that you make, that obviously you get to make for yourself, the Soviets will be guided by these cards. So taking a look at the cards here, each card, um, you have one deck of cards, and this manages everything from the events, determining weather, um, determining the offensive, determining who the Soviets attack, everything, um, which is actually a pretty cool little feature that they're all in the card. So let me guide you through a card here quick. So let's look at this one. Luftwaffe uses giant transports. So each time you're drawing a different card. So if you're looking for the event, it'll tell you right here, plus two supply points this turn, benefit to you. Um, then you may be drawing a card for the weather whether fair or poor, or it'll say stay the same. And the key is you're constantly drawing new cards, right? So it's never like, oh, the beginning of turn, you flip a card over and that's your card for the whole turn. Because then each turn, eventually you kind of see the same results. What it is, is for every different thing here, you are drawing a new card. Um, attacks, that would be where the Soviets will attack, unless they're in their final offensive stage, which comes towards the end of the game, in which case they'll be attacking every single location of yours that's adjacent to them. But it may be things like any three, they attack your odd positions, and the positions are numbered, attack all of them, etc. And then there's a spot here for a random number, which has to do with a uh, tactical attack option that you make. So the cards will control the Russians in you know saying, are they going to attack, and then where they attack, until you get that final offensive stage, in which case, if it happens, and usually it does, but not always, um, in which case then they will start attacking you every single turn. Um, again, like I said, you're checking for the strategic, uh, the overall SSI, strate strategic situation index, um, the whole Southern front, you're managing all of this together. 
Time goes by. You have to survive 16 turns in the game. The very end, you check for VPs, things like, do you control all of Stalingrad? Did you link up? And if so, how many units escaped through the link up? Um, you know, did were you wiped out? Did you have to surrender before that reached the six, uh, turn 16, etc.? Um, and that is Stalingrad Solitaire in a nutshell. I did not go super in-depth in the gameplay because I did do an extensive playthrough with, I put up the charts on there, spent a lot of time on it. So please, if you want to see the game in action, go check that out. Otherwise, this is more for just an overall overview and review, um, which I think we've covered the overview. So let's go ahead and dive into my pros and cons. All right, pros and cons. Go ahead, as usual, we'll start with my cons. Um, a couple things. There's definitely a few things that I've, I've, I struggled with or I think could have been done maybe better um, or maybe just wasn't didn't fit me. Um, first off, having to count morale every turn. So you have your morale, and I didn't explain it in my overview, but I'll explain it quick here. Basically, your morale is determined by the areas you control. Each regular black box area is worth one morale. If it's, it has a red box, it's worth three. Pretty simple. Um, and the game, you can tell, you can see the German Iron Cross, and you can see a Soviet star. So you always know exactly who controls what area to start with. You start at, I believe it's 33 morale. Well, kind of the problem or something that kind of, it just got a little tedious was technically you're supposed to count, you know, count your areas each turn to determine your morale. Now I end up kind of, uh, basically what I did was you start at 33 and every time I'd gain or lose an area, I would immediately adjust the morale. But it's not really what the rule book says. It says you're supposed to count each time, determine your morale. So there's a shortcut to it, right? Just make sure you adjust maybe your morale each time you take or lose an area. But if you are, when I first started playing, I was going by the rule book and I was counting every time and I, it was, it was pretty tedious, um, especially when you're counting for 16 turns, um, which goes into my second con. The game is 16 turns long. Um, you can see there's a pretty extensive sequence of play here. It, it's not an overly long game by any means. I mean, we've all played, you know, or tried to play or partially played, right? These epic games that take hours and hours, days, weeks, whatever. Uh, you know, usually with these solitaire games, and you can see the map, it's not even, you know, it's not a full-size map, right? It's not 22 by 34 inches or anything like that. Um, usually these games, hour, you know, hour and a half. This one is probably closer to two hours. It may be an hour and a half once you're really moving quick. Um, and that's not that long, but there's just something about the fact that maybe it's because there's 16 turns, turns. So 16 times you're repeating this entire sequence of play feels like it drags on a little bit so just keep that in mind again combined with things like counting morale it can become a little tedious um there's some errata um the rule book says you draw a cup draw from a cup instead of so when you draw a card it says draw from the cup well you're drawing cards like i, I assume that's probably from the original which was uh Dare kessel um the original version it back in published it back in 1996 i assume that was just kind of some errata but it's interesting that this upgraded deluxe version with you know these new rules new rule book I, you'd think they'd have to almost redo them who copy and pasted that you know what i mean and no one noticed that it's just it's just a small thing um and then another bit of errata a little a little bit of interesting is and this did, did uh, catch me at first i had to find someone online who pointed out the difference is the rule book says that if an area has the red star, that means it's worth three morale, otherwise worth one. That, that's not true. It is, if an area has a black box around it, it's worth one. If it has a red box, then it's worth three morale. So just FYI, something that literally is, you know, completely wrong in the rule book. Um, and then finally, the game has a bit of a, you're just along for the ride feeling. Um, it's a lot of like, draw a card, read it. Roll a die, read a chart. Um, there are real choices, but sometimes it doesn't seem like there's a lot of choices. You're just you're you're playing at the whim of the of the luck gods, right? The dice and the cards, and that is what it is. Um, the game can be sometimes can be a little bit more passive, um, passive and reactive than anything, right? You're not you don't really get to always be proactive. Sometimes something happens, you react to it. Something happens, you react to it. You roll a certain thing. You react to it, and, and that's just kind of how the game plays out. So those are my cons. Um, let's dive into my pros. So, and there's a bunch of them too, don't worry. First off, excellent component quality. 
Um, I think you guys can tell, right? Now, the counters, they aren't technically, you know, individually die cut. Like, say, you're seeing with, like, Worthington, DVGs, New Games, etc. But they're still very nice. First of all, they're very nicely cut. Now, you guys probably saw that during my recon, my unboxing. Nice and thick. They're large, easy to handle, easy to read on the board. I mean, I can have the camera up here. You guys can see everything. Super nice. Um, they And they come right out of the sprue. There's no need to clip them at all because the only nubs are these on the sides and it's they're not even like true side nubs i mean they're just it's nothing it's not even like on the side it's actually almost like up here a little bit so nothing they're great um the cards are linen finished sorry i was just like i was looking here in my notes um the uh cards are linen finished so you can see that see that like pattern that's what that means so they're very nice quality obviously the rounded corners nice and thick feel good i mean they're they're top tier cards right these cards are even nicer than something like DVG. This is more like Worthington. With their games, they usually have these linen finished cards. Very nicely done. Um, so, gotta love those. And not to mention the fact that, you know, how they look. But we'll get to that in a second. Um, and the map. Map's mounted. It's a mounted map. And it looks good. But it's nice, thick quality. True mounted with the, you know, you can see the wrap on the side here. So, and it lays super flat. I laid it out my first game. I think it laid flat either immediately or I set something on it for a, a couple minutes. It was not a problem whatsoever. So, um, and we kind of, we've already talked about a little bit. The overall graphical and art direction, I think works really well. Um, the map here, you can see it has, it has this flavor. You can see behind it, right? So like you have your areas, which are very clear, look good. But then you can see like the more real map, right? Kind of in the background behind it. It doesn't distract from it. Instead, it's there, and I think it works perfectly to illustrate. You know, it has that flavor and theme, and, like, you can see where you are. You can see, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's got Russian writing on here, but it's it's nice. It doesn't overtake the boxes. At the same time, you can actually see it. It's not just, like, the boxes are sitting on a blank background. Um, I've seen games do things like that, and I think it's a mistake to be that um, boring. Let's just use that word, right? It would be boring. This looks really good. Um, having the sequence of play on the map is nice. Um, just being able to run through, especially with any of these solitaire games, like I get it. Maybe if you have a two player game, it doesn't always make sense, but when you have a uh, solitaire game and you have this many steps, you have multiple phases and each phase has multiple steps, please put it on the board where I can read it. It helps me so much. And I, so I really appreciate that. Um, the cards, cards are great. So, you know, the cards, the fact that, you know, you have one deck of cards and you flip them over, and it's got all this information. So it's going to tell you something, you know, kind of like something from history, right? Luftwaffe uses giant transports. We talked about that earlier. It's going to give you, an, in one card, you have that, you have an event, you have, you can check weather, the Soviet offensive, how they're attacking, like where they're attacking. And then you have a random number listed, and you get these photographs. So you get these historical real photographs. They're not overpowering. They're not taking over the card, anything like that. And no, they're not huge, but it's just kind of fun to see that, right? Relief force solidifies position. And you can see, you know, you can see these Germans here with their, they get their, uh, looks like an anti-tank gun prepared. German here. You know what I mean? You can, you just get to see aircraft coming in. Soviet planes control the air, etc. My point is, I like that, right? Every bit of theme, every bit of thing like that helps bring you into the game. And when you're playing alone, you're playing so these solitaire games, you need that, right? You need something to pull you into the game. So you're not just pushing some counters around going, oh, I rolled some dice, pushed some counters. All right, whatever. You want to feel that, right? You want to feel like you're in that cauldron. So anyway, great job with those cards. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but I just really did enjoy the, the art direction graphics. I think you did a fantastic job overall. All right. My last pro I'll share is... I think that the choices in the game realistically reflect the choices of the German defenders. So I did mention, you know, in my cons of kind of the reaction, but let's be honest, as the German defenders, they didn't have a whole lot of choice going on anyway. They were surrounded. They were limited in what they could do. They didn't have a million choices. This isn't an open-ended game. You know, you have one side lined up, one side, the other side lined up, and you kind of make whatever choices you want. No, no, no. That's not what's going on here. You're surrounded. And so you need to make the best of a very poor situation. In this game, you know, what do you do? Your, your wounded are piling up. As you're taking losses, your wounded are piling up. Well, 
you're gonna try, you're gonna hang on and hope you don't get too many wounded because if you ever reach a certain amount of wounded, the game's gonna end there with a German uh, morale. Basically, their the morale collapses. So then you got to try to fly them out. Well, if you're flying them out, you're taking up time and resources that you don't have then for other things you want to do. Um, do you attempt to reach Hoth for the link up? You know, do you want to try to push out, push out, break out of the encirclement and try to link up? Well, that's going to breach your perimeter and you're going to have to spend basically most of your resources on that. So if you're not successful, it's going to hurt you. Um, and if that happens, your odds are you're done and you're not even going to reach the historical result. Trust me. Um, do you hunker down and fortify yourself? Do you basically go on the defensive and just say, I'm going to you know, build up these, and here's these things are called PDMs, prepared defense markers. You build those all over your perimeter and kind of hunker down and say, I'm just going to try to survive the Soviet onslaught and make it to the end of the game. I mean, it's one choice, but guess what? I mean, that means you're not going to, probably not going to have a chance for like a, a really good victory because it's, you're being defensive, you know, you're not taking your risks. So I think that's it for my pros and cons. I covered a bunch of different things. I just, but I just had a lot, of, a lot of thoughts in this game, a lot of stuff I wanted to share. So let's go into my final thoughts and uh, we'll wrap this up. All right. So time for my final thoughts. I covered my pros and cons, covered quite a bit. A couple more things to say though. Um, I will say that I think this game has a unique feel. And although victory is technically possible, the reality is you're playing to avoid the worst. Much like the German defenders in Stalingrad, your choices generally range from bad to worse. I can recommend this game if you enjoy an extremely challenging game, trust me on that, on a topic and part of the war that is really more infamous than famous. Um, there's very little glory to be had at Stalingrad, let's be honest, right? Yet sometimes that's kind of the point of these games, um, to educate us on how truly horrible certain situations were. This game is a perfect example of that. It's kind of a no-win situation. There is technically, if you go, you know, you go by the rule book and you look through the victory, there's a way, you know, if you do the right thing and you're able to link up and get your forces out of there and you save most of your army. Technically, you'll see in the book, it'll say, oh, look, like German decisive victory and all this stuff. Possible. Um, I'm not saying the game is impossible to win. That is possible to get. Um, but overall, it's a bit of a slog fest. It's 16 turns of you being encircled until maybe you're not, right? Maybe you get that link up. You got to take that risk, though, and you're going to be devoting all of your resources to that. So overall, I do enjoy the game. Um, obviously, like I said, I do recommend it if you want a more challenging game, if you want a game that is not all roses and just like, whatever, you know, doesn't uh, just roll some dice, whatever. I mean, you're, you're take here that you're, you know, you're surrounded, you're taking wounded, you're always, you never have enough supply. Like, if you watch my playthrough you'll see that perfectly portrayed. Um, you're going to take losses because you're not going to be able to supply everyone. So you're literally going to have units fading away because you don't have supply for them. Um, the weather's going to turn against you. So you're not going to be able to do your airlifts properly. It's going to be tough. It's You're going to start off strong, relatively, and it's probably going to be pretty much downhill from there. If you like that kind of challenging game, I can definitely recommend this one for you. Um, if you want something that's a little more fluid, right, has a little more open-ended options and choices, it may not be for you, but I did enjoy it. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So please, if you have not subscribed, if you watched all this stuff and you've listened to me talk, please subscribe, really would appreciate it. Also throw up a like on the video if you did like it. Comment below, let me know what you did like, what you didn't like too, that's fine. How about this game? Have you played it yet? Do you wanna get a copy? Um, let me know below. So other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this. We got plenty more content coming on the channel. You guys are the best. We're going to keep this going. All right. So until next time, guys, later.